big part of our philosophy at Rosewood is to give the guest an experience that is perhaps different to what they may have seen or stayed in, in our property in London or, or New York. When they come to Thailand, we want them to feel like they're in Thailand. Now, the, the design may not scream Thailand, but certainly the touch points and the service delivery should. Hello, this is Andrew Turner from Rosewood Bouquet talking to Renee on her fantastic global podcast, Where To From Here, about the future of luxury hotels here in Southeast Asia. your passion for working in hospitality? I mean, did you ever imagine you'd be where you are right now? Good question. Uh, you, look, I, I fell in love with it after school. Well, I was probably a pretty average student. I, I sort of was stuck on the sporting field at King. So I, I was into my rugby and rowing. And then, uh, so I blamed my scores at school on that. But after I left, uh, my sister was in a GM of a hotel. So I was sort of exposed to that through my family. And then uh, I went to hotel school straight out of King's, actually. So I, I studied in Sydney at the, uh, it was called the hotel school at the time. I think it's called Southern Cross now, at the, uh, in, underneath the, uh, the Intercontinental. And I did two years there, and that's, I fell in love with it. So I actually did really well, for, uh, I think, because I enjoyed what I was doing. So I put my head down for two, two and a half years and, and, uh, and really did well in the study part of it. And then I just, yeah, it just clicked in the operation side. I felt comfortable. I enjoyed being around people I enjoyed not being in an office um you know back then I was a bellman and I used to park cars and you know you as a bellman hotel I joined the Ritz Carlton in Double Bay oh classic and very famous yeah, back in its heyday. So I was there as a bellman uh, and, you know, and we, when was that, 90, 93 maybe? And uh, yeah, so it was when it was, you know, Melbourne Cup. It was just back, it was it was in its prime, that little hotel. And so uh, I had a lot of fun there. I was there for five years actually. And, and, and where, uh, where did your sister work? You said that she worked in hotels. Yeah, so she was, um, she was with a few groups, but she spent most of her time with a little group called Peppers. Oh, yes. Back then, so she was a GM of Peppers at uh, at Nelson Bay in Port Stephens, and also somewhere in Byron Bay, I think, at the time they had a little one, and um, yeah. and somewhere else. But yeah, so uh, she sort of got out of the hotel business now, but she's more involved in the tourism side of. Um, she's one of the directors of tourism in Port Stephens, actually. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, there's still a connection. Yeah, and I mean, you just have had a phenomenal rise to success. And what stood out for me, just looking at your resume, was the position, you know, in New York, working for Baccarat as GM for the residences. I mean, that must have been incredible. Good fun. Actually, yeah, it was both hotel and re- so we had residence uh, and hotel. Wow. So I was the GM of both, but um, there was a great project to be on. So. I got uh, circled into that. I was actually um, previously when I was with Capella uh, and Ritz Carlton, my uh, one of my senior executives uh, joined uh, the holding company that managed Baccarat. So uh, he called me and said, "Hey, listen, why don't you come and do this?" And it was just an opportunity I couldn't sort of say no to. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it was a great a great project, and we had 58, 60 residences and around one hundred and five hotel rooms. And so, sorry, how long? was that because residence is now becoming more and more popular of course the Armands um in August opening their own residences in New York yes so that was uh that was back in 2013 oh, uh, so ahead of time. yeah so so we had uh, and, and they did really well the residences there obviously the location in New York on 53rd and 5th right opposite uh the Museum of Modern Art fantastic location and the hotel just had uh something about it it wasn't too big uh it, it had a great synergy with the Baccarat Crystal brand obviously so you had a product that you could touch and feel and experience in the hotel where perhaps you know other brands the fashion brands that have gone into the hotel space they can build that into the design but it's hard to touch it uh and you know 
Yeah. So with Baccarat, you you held it, you had it all around you, and uh, it was a great showcase, not only for the Crystal Company, but it just blended so well into the hotel space. And that was one of the reasons I was really excited about that project. And so we had to figure out how do you take a Crystal Company with 250 odd years of history and bring that into the service space and, and bring it into bring it to life? Well, what was it going to feel like? What was the design going to be like? And how was the service delivery going to be? So uh, yeah, it was really a clean canvas uh, when we uh, started that project. So I guess every glass in the hotel was the crystal? Yeah. So, uh, the, you Wouldn't know, want I to break too many. Yeah, <laughs> I so tell expensive. you. Yeah, the average cost of a glass was like $65. So that was the average and uh it, yeah it, it really was and we had long conversations about that actually should it be and in the end it was you know we decided how could it not be anything else but Baccarat so we made that commitment and I remember sitting there in the pre-opening literally with the catalog from Baccarat and I flew to the factory actually which was amazing but sitting there with the catalog uh, selecting over a million dollars uh, worth of glasses yeah so, uh, Unbelievable. And tell me, what sort of people would stay at a hotel like that? Were they Baccarat obsessors? Were they looking like, who, who would stay there? Yeah, some, you're right. Some were just really interested to see what we did. Uh, but it also, it attracted a lot of art and fashion type of community. Uh, yes, we had a corporate clientele due to location and so on, but it was more, it was more that fashion, um, retail, high executive uh, celebrities, yes, of course, uh, high net worth that would come in uh, and looking for something um, different. But what we found was the bar that uh, on the second floor there was um, the Baccarat bar. So it was just, you know, it was stunning, amazing. And, and, and literally from day one, it was just full every night. Uh, and so brand. that. The yeah, brand. yeah, it was all branding. So, so that worked well for us. And very in a very short space of time, the the hotel just positioned itself really at the pointy end of that New York market. So, uh, it was uh, it was really great, a great time of my life. And so, do you miss it? I mean, now you're in Phuket, you're working for another incredible hotel brand. H how did you make the transition? So I lived in Phuket previously years ago. Uh, I was a GM of a hotel here uh, with the Anantara brand at the time. So, I I knew the island, and I'd been um, very interested in Rosewood for some time actually. I'd been in touch uh, with Rosewood from time to time, and, and uh, I had the opportunity to meet the president and, and meet uh, Sonia, our CEO, over the years. So when Phuket was coming online, uh, we got in touch, and with my experience here and uh, with opening hotels, it was uh, it was an opportunity for me to come back to Asia, which I was looking forward to. Uh, my time in New York was was really enjoyable, but I I've lived in quite a few locations over the years, and as much as New York's you know, New York's New York, right? It's it's amazing, but it was never going to be somewhere where I would. Say Settled. So it was a great time, but uh, you know, I, this part of the world, close to Australia, um, after all these years traveling, it was uh, a, a region we we wanted to come back to. So China, Egypt, Ireland, Qatar, the US, as you've said, Thailand, you've said Australia. They're the places that I know that you've worked in. You're going to stay in Phuket for a while? Absolutely. Yeah, this has really become sort of home for me and my family. So we we enjoy it here. We enjoy the culture and the people and. And the hotel, there's never a dull moment, you know, in a resort hotel. So we're, we're constantly trying to tweak what we do and 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 redevelop uh, our concepts. So yeah, I'm hopeful that this uh, this remains my home for some time. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I read that you have the most incredible environmental policy, which is so important. Can you talk us through what it is? Yeah, so we made a commitment, uh, or the owners, I should say, in Rosewood, been right back in the pre-opening uh, in construction phase for this hotel uh, to make a sort of a commitment and a stand in regards to how we built it. So we built to lead certified gold, which is really um, criteria, which is not easy to meet. That, that as we build the hotel, we have to meet a certain threshold of initiatives that are environmentally and sustainable. And a lot of it is around water. So we we, we harvest rainwater here. We capture the rain from uh, the monsoon season. We hold it in holding lakes and we process it in the resort back into the rooms. Uh, and, and we pretty much, unless it's a really sort of short monsoon season, we can pretty much sustain our Ourselves all year round on water. Uh, we don't put anything out of our onto the beach or in, back into the environment, so we're fully contained. Our our sewage system is all internal. It's recycled back through a, a large treatment plant on property and then uh, used back on landscaping and back in uh, in then some other parts of the outside areas. And uh, that's a big part of it. We also have some uh, solar, uh, which offsets some of our electricity, not a lot, but some. And then 50% of the resort is green. So big investment when you think about 
about the real estate uh, uh, investment Absolutely. is to make half of it landscaping. So uh, our roofs are landscaped to, to soften the, the um, absorption of heat, which needs less uh, um, uh, air conditioning. And so there's quite a lot of offset there in regards to that. So yeah, it was a big, a big commitment for a very the expensive one. I can only imagine. A very expensive one, yes, but uh, we're we're very proud at the time to be really the only hotel in this part of the world, in this in this um, part of Thailand that that has been built to that standard. And I think a few now are following, and we've been a very good example for the local authorities who have used us as sort of that uh, golden child to say, hey, to developers, you know, go and visit Rosewood Phuket because that's really the way forward oh, in wonderful. regards to how we build. Yeah, so we're very proud of that, and and really doing our bit to make sure we um, uh, we, we 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 take care of the environment that we live and work in. And it sounds like you were personally quite involved with that whole process. Yeah, so I, I learned a lot. So we had some great advisors uh, during the, the construction phase, uh, but I was certainly um, involved in, in making sure that we were able to meet some of these criteria. But we had a great construction crew. We had a great project team that was driven from our owner's side and the Rosewood side. So I was fortunate to work with some really talented people and it really opened my eyes to what you can do in regards to building sustainably. So uh, yeah, it's been something that I've been enjoyed continuing to learn more about. And do you think the future of luxury hotels at this time is in Southeast Asia? I don't think it is the future, but I absolutely think there is a strong future here. Uh, mm. There's still markets that are untouched. Uh, you know, we're looking, obviously, some developments in Vietnam. We see the Philippines. We see Indonesia. It's about getting the right location with the right partner. And uh, I think there's uh, there's op- many opportunities that have come and been presented to us, but we're quite selective when it comes to the, getting the location right and making making sure we, we're aligned with our business partners on, on what we feel that environment needs and what we want to do there. So what I'm saying, we're patient, but we take our time to get the right spot. Absolutely. And your regional vice president across Southeast Asia, how would you compare the luxury hotel experience there compared to, say, the Middle East or the US, both of which you've worked in? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, I get that asked that a lot and more so I get asked that question a little bit more around the associate side, the employee side. And I answer that by saying, look, it is different, but it's not. Not. And in regards to an expectation of a luxury customer in any one of these markets, uh, I think is very similar and the same. But I think it's important that when people travel, they feel the environment that they're staying in and there needs to be a real sense of place. And I think that's what we're trying to deliver here. And a big part of our philosophy at Rosewood is to give the guests an experience that is perhaps different to what they may have seen or stayed in, in our property in London or, or New York. Right. When they're coming to Thailand, we want them to feel like they're in Thailand. Now, the, the design may not scream Thailand, but certainly the touch points and the service delivery should. And uh, I think the main difference is that we want people to feel the culture. And, and that's the main difference to me. So in Doha, you know, when someone stays in Doha, they're really feeling the culture that they're in through the service delivery, the characters that we hire, making sure that they, you know, give them the freedom, the boundaries are there, the guidelines are there, but we also want them to be themselves and bring some of their personal um, experiences and culture uh, through to that guest experience. Uh, so that's the main difference. Yeah, but with yeah. people, it's the same. You know, if I'm talking to a housekeeper in New York or in Doha or in Phuket, and I think, you know, it's really similar. We, we want to be respected. We want to be taken care of. We want to have a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging. It's very similar, actually. Different cultures, yes, how we get to that result may be slightly different in Thailand, perhaps the Middle East, where we had over 45 different nationalities working in the hotel. But it's really the fundamentals are the same, how we take care of people and respect people. And how, which is just everything really, how would you compare like the Rosewood DNA? I've actually never stayed in a Rosewood. It's probably mm. one of the only luxury brands I haven't yet. What's the DNA compared to other brands in the market? Yeah, so again, uh, perhaps what I touched on earlier was, you know, we have a beautiful design and again, doesn't necessarily scream the location, but our hotels are all different. Your struggles to go to a Rosewood where you have similarities, perhaps you maybe there's a thread, but it's not cut and paste. And mm. I think over the years, if I look back in 30 odd years, uh, there has been a few cut and paste brands out there that perhaps you stay in a property and go to one of their other properties and it's very similar yes. and uh, with us we push to make sure we push our design teams our design partners that we partner with we're very selective on that but we also push them to give us something different and above what the competitors are doing but to me I think first and foremost luxury needs to be comfortable and I think that's important and what we've done here in Phuket uh, if I can is the design team given a brief is that we don't want to scream Thailand we want to know you're in Thailand, but first and foremost, we want it to be comfy. We want it to be comfortable. I want you to relax. And I think the, the key to a guest coming to a resort is how quickly I can make you relax. <laughs> 
And uh, we're through the environment design, it. through the service delivery, through the food offering, through the ease of moving through the resort, the smells, the sounds, it all has to come together as quickly as possible so you can disconnect. And, and you know, there's a lot of moving parts underneath the water, but for me, it's about how do I make you just feel like when you check out and someone asks you, how was your stay? You're like, I don't know what it was, but you can't quite put your finger on it, but it all just sort of came together and I feel good. Then I know, okay, it's 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 worked. Well, yeah. yeah. And what would you say, I mean, given the huge changes we've all experienced in the world, what would you say is your biggest challenge right now as GM? Yeah, look, I think globally it's talent. I think we've seen a lot of shift in careers uh, over the past uh, two and a half years uh, in many different industries. And I think industries will compete with for great talent. And I think for us, it's making sure that we stay true to who we are and uh, we have a strong purpose in what we set out to do. So it's about having um, people want to come and join us to be a part of something. And you know, I often say to join something sort of that brings more value, it's worth more than the money you earn. And that to me is is what's going to move the needle in regards to finding great talent um, back into our but industry. How do, you, how do you find them? I mean, you know, it's one thing to do that, but you have to have them there too in order to... Yeah, sort of yeah. Look, yeah, getting in ground roots. And I think really working with students coming out of different types of schools, we've been known for an industry that perhaps is transit. You pass through, certainly in Australia back in the day, right? You have a casual job at a bar or a restaurant. And it's how do we elevate or make that talent see that you, you can actually build an amazing career in this industry and work your way from a bartender to a president of the company. And it's more about the purpose of what brings you to work and gets you out of bed every day. And I think that's a focus for us is to make sure people are joining something more than just function of the job. Uh, you can be a bartender, a housekeeper, cleaning pots. That's the function of your job. You know, we have a higher purpose. We're here to create something, create excellence, create an experience that's more than the function of what we do. And, and to me, that's where it lies. That's making that connection with the students coming out of school or someone that's looking to change industries. Uh, come and join us and, and we can take you and you can be a part of this journey. And the other thing with us is you can help write the book. Uh, you know, and I think that's a big part of being a company as nimble as Rosewood at the moment where, yes, we have a lot of momentum. We have a lot of recognition. A lot of people want to build a Rosewood for us. We have a lot of people wanting to come and join us. But you also have a part to, to create the company that you want it to be. And I think that's exciting for um, potential employees who, who come and join us. We're, we're not a cookie cutter brand. We don't have all the, the books on the shelf that, that says this is how we do things. We, we want to be entrepreneurial and, and really give the opportunity for people to be themselves and be a part of the business and help us create the brand. Yeah, I'm sold. Sounds fantastic. And talk to me about wellness at Rosewood Phuket. Is there a greater demand and what unique features does your program have? We've certainly seen, look, obviously during the past two years, it dipped away for obvious reasons, but uh, I think uh, there's going to be a strong, it'll come roaring back. It already started, uh, already has. Here we have our Sire brand, which is our in-house uh, wellness brand for Rosewood. We have Scent Spa and we have a Sire Wellness. We have an Sire Wellness here and really it's about programming for our guests. And we, we, we often try and meet you where you are on your wellness wellness journey and we consult with you what you're looking for how you want to feel when, when you leave us and uh, we try and meet you there but a big part of I think the future for us in, in wellness is food and that connection of course the mind body and soul and, and doing the, the, all the, the programming and yoga and so forth but I think a big part is missing in, across the industry is food and how that ties into the wellness component and we're focusing a lot on that at the moment here in Phuket. Okay. And what sort of food? Like we're talking low calorie, low carb, yeah. low. Oh, even more, just uh, give, giving more opportunity. We're seeing a, a movement to, uh, toward plant based and global, and, isn't it? That movement. Yeah, it's really it, it's there, and I think companies that don't keep up with that and f have an offering is going to miss out. Now, I was at a restaurant last night in Phuket, and uh, I hadn't been for some time actually, mainly because of the menu. <laughs> but I went back, and uh, I was delighted to see that. They had five options, vegan options on the menu. And I asked the staff who I sort of know there, you, you have a new menu. And they said, we had to, we just had to. There was so much uh, demand or comments coming from locals and uh, and tourists that, that would come and uh, they didn't have the choice to come back. So maybe there's one dish they could eat, but then there's like, hey, I'm not coming back for a Caesar salad with no chicken. I want, you know, if I am plant-based, I, I, I need more. And so I think those uh, companies that don't keep up in that space can get left behind. Behind. Yeah. 
Interesting. And Andrew, are you vegan? Uh, I'm not, but I, I mainly eat plants, put it that way. So I'm not, okay. yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah I felt my diet is pretty much plant-based, yes. And how do you personally do stress? I mean, you've got massive responsibility, not just for the Phuket Hotel, but for Southeast Asia. What's your wellness program for yourself? Yeah, so I, I try and exercise at least five times a week during the morning. If I don't do it in the morning, I don't do it at all because I don't I'm know I don't know where my day is going to go in the evening. And by the end of the day, I go home and eat something and go to bed. So I do it in the morning. Yeah, I enjoy, uh, you know, some running and a lot of body work, um, calisthenics. So it's not so much gym work. It's more body body weight work. Yeah. And then uh, my weekends, if uh, I get a day off, it's normally spent uh, on the water. I, I enjoy uh boating and, and being out on the ocean no wonder you're in Phuket <laughs> yes we're in one of the best places in the world for that yeah absolutely mm. and I wanted to ask you a few people have written in and said oh can you ask ask these GMs and you've you know been in the industry so long do they ever get to select where they go can they target a location how does it usually work yeah you can look that's it's an interesting question because over the years it's changed you know in my early career I'd get a call on a Thursday afternoon that you're moving to Shanghai and you need to be there by Monday um <laughs> <laughs> no, no questions asked. You just, you know, in you go, right? Uh, but but now we're finding, and probably rightly so, that the new generations are, you know, very selective on on, on where they'd like to work uh, and uh, which location and, and so forth. But yes, to answer your question, if we have GMs that would like to be in certain locations in Europe or a certain city, perhaps we'll do our best to get them there if they fit the profile for that hotel. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, to make sure they're happy, we're happy. But uh, it sometimes doesn't work all, out that way, that, that opportunities may come up. Uh, we have great GMs that we may approach and say, look, this is what we have. Uh, you're interested to move somewhere. Uh, and majority will say, yeah, sure, let me let me see if I can make it work. Uh, when I came through the ranks, I had a strong desire to move to these different locations, whether it be China, the Middle East, the US. So to really understand those different marketplaces. So later on in my career, and you did perhaps, it. And you did it. Yeah, so I made it happen. I had great mentors. I had great bosses. I spent a long time with Ritz Carlton, nearly 15 years. So I was able to move through the ranks with them. And now looking back, it was the best thing I did because you, you become a little bit more marketable and knowledgeable, frankly, on these different marketplaces. And when you move into a regional role, um, I was overseeing the Middle East uh, for the last two years as well. Uh, you, you understand those markets and cultures and and different asset managers and owners and developers. And so you can really, you, you have a stronger understanding of, of how to be successful in those those different markets and it's not easy you know understanding right. cultures across you know such extreme you know different uh, religions cultures everything countries temperatures that doesn't come you know in a week <laughs> No, it doesn't. You know, it really doesn't. And I and I, and I think, uh, look, the basics are always there, respect for being humble and, and really uh, and, and looking out for people. But I often used to comment about in China, I would see business people coming in from whether it's the US, Australia, it doesn't matter where, but they would fly in on a Monday, think they were going to do the deal on a Tuesday and fly home Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I often said to, to some of them, look, I, I'm going to be seeing you come back for years before you sign a deal about building a relationship in these different parts yes. of China. It takes a long time. And uh, uh, and so some of those things I learned along the way have been very helpful. Mm. Yeah. Look, it's so interesting. You've had such a wonderful career. I could sit and listen to you, but I need to ask you the question I ask everyone, where to from here for you? Yeah, good one. Uh, look, for now, uh, it's uh, Phuket's home and uh, I, I enjoy it this part of the world, Southeast Asia. So uh, it's it's hard to hard to say what's next for me in regards to location. But uh, for now, it's uh, it's really just enjoying running the hotel and running the region and looking after people and and, uh, and learning from from the team around me. So uh, yeah, I can't tell you where or when, but uh, at the moment, it's just to keep doing what we're doing and growing the business here in Thailand. And do you mentor people? I know you said you were mentored. Mm. So, yeah, we actually have a mentoring program within Rosewood, and uh, I was mentoring uh, a gentleman in our corporate office who worked in our talent and culture department. So we would dial into each other a couple of times a month and, and just have conversations, or he'd call me about uh, things that he was working on and maybe needed some advice. Uh, and then within the hotel as well, yes, we, we our executive team spend time with uh, all levels of the organization. But uh, from a Rosewood point of view, we had a very structured mentor program, which is great. I think it's so important now. I have one within my business. It's um, and to be honest, I find it really fulfilling. Do you? 
Yes, I do too. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think you get to a stage in your career where you can be content in what you're doing and you have to look at, say, how can I give back and how can I make mm-hmm. sure that I, I do my bit to set someone up uh, or give advice to someone that maybe help them be more successful. And in any way, it can be work-wise, personal, uh, fitness goals, anything. So it's just nice to, to, to have those conversations with um, and helping people. Yeah. Absolutely. And as you said, you've had such experience in so many different markets that is just so rare to find. And if people need that information, they really need it. So I can imagine you would have a lot to give. Yeah, I enjoy it. I mean, they, yeah, I can give some sound bites across different markets, that's for sure. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Love you to All meet right. you, Andrew. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. Have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe here and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for regular travel updates. You can also hear our episodes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.